Hey, thanks for coming back. Uh, today, I'm happy and I'm sad. Uh, I'm happy because uh, yesterday, the uh, House in the Idaho uh, uh, Congress legislature uh, approved and voted on constitutional carry for the state of Idaho. Uh, and, and what that means uh, is if you are legal to buy and possess a firearm, you now are able to carry that firearm uh, into anywhere where carrying a firearm is legal in the state of Idaho, and it's almost everywhere. Uh, and you may carry it in the manner in which it is most comfortable for you. <clears throat> now, I had the, the, the pleasure of, of uh, participating in the Senate hearings uh, and uh, listening to the testimony of people who are pro and against the, uh, the legislation. Um, I also testified uh, for uh, carrying concealed weapons on public college and university campuses in Idaho. And it was interesting that the, the anti-language was spookily, I just made that up, the same. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been a puzzlement for me. I was not born and raised in, in Idaho. Uh, I was raised in Los Angeles, and I mean the Los Angeles, not one of the suburbs. Uh, I went to high school with the guys who would eventually create the Crips and the Bloods. Um, I was a biker. I rode a Harley. And I had a 357 Magnum that I open carried in a holster uh, when riding my bike. And the highway patrol would come up on their bikes and they would look over and, you know, they, they do the man nod. They look and see what you're wearing. And you look and, and they go, yeah, and you go, yeah, and they would speed off and you would, that's the way it was. It is not like that anymore in California, but it is like that here. And for the life of me, it, I, I couldn't, I couldn't understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. It is a constitutional right, an individual constitutional right. Otherwise it wouldn't be in the Bill of Rights, the first 10. Those are only for individual rights. Um, so what is going on? And I try to be objective. I try to listen to those who legitimately, not legitimately, but who, who really are passionate about why they don't, uh, they, they don't want uh, firearms uh, around them. Um, and one of the things that I found in doing my research is there are, there are 50 states, right? And every state has a constitution. But only five, five, do not have in their constitution the right of the citizen to keep and bear arms. They do not have that right that mirrors the Bill of Rights. And I, and, and I went, aha! Because with, with the various reciprocities and, like, and concealed carry permits that I have, I have reciprocity in 45 states. Guess which five I don't? And it was a blinding flash of the obvious. A blinding flash of the obvious. And I thought, okay. What is happening here? Why is that the way it is? And I listened to the testimony of the people who are pro and against. And here's what I found interesting, and it was in both cases. Because I thought, oh, law enforcement is going to be totally against this thing, which was absolutely not true. In Idaho, there are 44 counties, right? The County Sheriff's Association, that's the sheriffs of all 44 counties, 
voted overwhelmingly to approve constitutional carry in the state of Idaho. Guess who didn't? The police chiefs of the three largest cities in Idaho, and I happen to live in one of those. And I know the police chief. I knew his predecessor. And it's like I wanted to go bang my head against the wall, right? He, he starts his testimony by saying, I'm absolutely for the Second Amendment, but I don't like this bill. And then his rationale was this, and I've heard this by others. My officers need to be able to verify if a person who is carrying a concealed gun is legal to, to carry a concealed gun. In other words, I can stop and frisk. Now, we have open carry, so he can't stop you if you're open carrying. He can only stop you if he sees a bulge. So, it is an administrative crime, an administrative issue, not a threat issue. In other words, if I think the person is carrying a concealed weapon, I can stop them and verify that. And if they do, I can, I can check them out to see if they're legal to carry it. Well, Nat and, and a couple of the senators who responded back and said, hey, excuse me, excuse me. So what you're saying is, is that seeing a gun is not probable cause that the person is going to commit a crime, but not seeing a gun is. Help me explain, you know, explain that to me, right? So you have one group of law enforcement officers that say, we don't care. We assume everybody's carrying and we take the appropriate precautions. The other guy says, well, I want to be able to stop people. Well, the, the, the lawmaker said, no. You stop people if you have probable cause. Now, the other part is sheriffs are elected. They answer only to the people. Police chiefs are hired by the mayor and city council. <laughs> so guess what the police chiefs are cursed to do? They must tow the politician's line even if they disagree with it, under pain of losing their job. Bada bing. Blinding flash of the obvious. I say, okay, now I get it. Because who, can, who controls the cities in, in these five states where, by the way, if you, if you look at the, where all of the, the violent gang-related gun crime is committed, it's in the largest cities, of those five states. Who knew? So who are these states? <laughs> New York is the worst. New York. Then New Jersey. Then Maryland. Then California. Now remember, I grew up in California. I was never hassled. And Minnesota and Iowa. Now, in both Minnesota and Iowa, both of those, even though they don't have a constitutional amendment in their state constitution, both are shall issue concealed carry permit states. They don't allow any uh, law enforcement agency to interfere with that, whether it's sheriff or police. Right? Now, Missouri and Alabama didn't, but... Uh, they have re both have referendums to add those to their constitutions, and that probably will happen. So it begs the question, what would happen if such a referendum was put to the people of New York, New Jersey, California? Let me explain why that will never happen, not in my lifetime anyway, and probably not even in yours. The state of New York is the ringleader in the entire anti-gun movement, and it has been since 1911. Now, if you go back and, and 
look at American history and look at New York history, you will hear something called Tammany Hall and the political bosses of Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall was where all of the crooked crooks and politicians hang, hung out in, the, in uh, New York, uh, in the city of New York, and as well as the state. And if you saw the movie Gangs of New York, remember, there was no real police, right? It was the gangs. And what happened was the gangs were controlled by the politicians in Tammany Hall, right? And the biggest asshole of all of that was a guy named Sullivan. He was a Democratic senator from the state of New York. Big Tim Sullivan, and he controlled the lion's share of all the gang activities and the criminal activities in, this, in New York City. Uh, there was this big fight, big fight, and two gangs got together. The, the police showed up because they did it, and the gangs joined and turned on the cops. The people went total batshit crazy and said, you need to fix this. We can't have the gangs doing this stuff. So the result was the Sullivan Act of 1911. Right? And the Sullivan Act said, you cannot own a firearm, a pistol, unless you have a permit. And then it, you can only have it in your house. If you carry one concealed, it's a felony and we will send you to prison. The only people who were given permits were the gang members because the gang members were ended up being deputized, in quotes, by Tammany Hall. Why? So they could go and intimidate voters at the polls. And he, he needed to have his bad guys armed without going to jail because the gangs were starting to complain to him, hey, when we start intimidating people, we start rolling on people, you know, they shoot back. We can't have them shooting back. <laughs> so the end result was, you guessed it, bad guys get the guns, citizens get disarmed so they can be controlled by the bad guys with guns. And guess who the bad guys with guns are today in most big cities? You guessed it. So what do you think would happen if there was constitutional carry for every citizen? Yes, police couldn't stop anybody because they saw a bulge. But what do you think would happen in these five states if every citizen could legally, who, if, they, if they were legal to purchase, which means they would pass a federal background check, not some trumped up thing in the states. What do you think would happen? Initially, there would be bodies in the street. There would be bad guys of all flavors with sucking chest wounds laying in the street, put there by armed citizens. All of that crazy gang stuff would go away. Why? Because law enforcement could not, could not, do anything except support the citizens against the criminals. All that stuff will go away, I won't say overnight, but in really, really short time. Yes, there will be a lot of dead people, but most of those dead people would be the people you need to have dead. Just saying. And just to, to reinforce this weird chemistry, right? Uh, I train a lot. I train a lot uh, as a civilian. I don't go rolling around in the dirt. I'm not trying to be some operator over in Iraq. But I do want to be very proficient with the tools that I have to defend myself and the innocent. And uh, uh, all of my instructors are uh, law enforcement, ex-law enforcement, uh, and slash probably military as well. And one of the uh, the guys, uh, we were having this conversation, and I said, so, I was all happy, right? Man, we got constitutional carry, and he goes, no, I don't think I like that. 
Why? Because he's from California. You know what he told me? He said, well, when I was on the job, only two people had guns. We had guns, and the bad guys had guns. So if I saw a gun, I could draw down on them. And I said, well, now everybody can have a gun, and now you can't do that. Well, it just makes my job harder. In what way? Because you're still supposed to assume that everyone is armed. So does that mean that your behavior changes? He stopped and he goes, well, yeah, it would. I said, yeah, you couldn't treat everybody as if they're a crook. Right? Because the bad guys are going to have their guns anyway. Right? In New York, it would kill stop and frisk. Kill it dead. Put a stake in the heart. The other reason is it wouldn't be necessary. It wouldn't be necessary to have all those stupid roving patrols inside of buildings. Because that 84-year-old woman who's got her AR in her house is going to give a bunch of guys a dirt nap. And they won't come up on her floor anymore. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Constitution to carry the right of every citizen to keep and bear arms in the manner in which is comfortable for them is the right thing to do everywhere. Now, your comments are always welcome. Put them down below. If you want to know more about the Sullivan Act of 1911, Google is your friend. I'm not going to put a, there's a billion links. I'm not going to deal with that on this, on this video. Check it out. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. Carry on.